Bay Bucks at the Los Angeles Rams. This was the game back in like April. You know how they set the early lines and the Rams were favored by one way back then. It's now Bucks one and a half, um, favored by one and a half in LA at the Rams. Both teams 2-0. and Both the two highest graded teams just by our pure team grades. Uh, Rams looking great on both sides of the ball. Bucks looking outstanding on offense, good on defense. It's an incredible matchup. And the one thing to watch here, Antonio Brown is in COVID protocol right now and his uh, status is up in the air for this game. Yeah, with COVID. So he actually needs to clear COVID, you know, get over it, and then have a couple of negative tests, what is it, 48 hours apart before he could get in the game. It feels unlikely that he'll be playing. Um, The big thing, though, is, look, this Rams offense has been cooking. The Matthew Stafford plus Sean McVay experiment is going incredibly. It seems to be producing uh, a, a phenomenal season at a Cooper Cup as well. Now what happens when you face an actual defense? Because they haven't really done that yet. They've rolled over a couple of teams that haven't really been able to feel much opposition to them. Now you're going up against Tampa Bay. Okay, that defense has been banged up a little bit. They're not 100% healthy and uh, cooking the way they want to, but it's still by far the best defense that the Rams have faced and a team that should actually cause them some problems. So does it still function the same way against those guys? So on that side of the ball... Uh, the Bucks, they've, they've given up some points over the first couple of weeks. To the Cowboys, they got picked apart a little bit by Dak in the passing attack. Last week, a weird one, Atlanta worked their way back into the game, and then uh, Tampa Bay cracked down. But we're talking about a really good Tampa Bay front seven. So on this side of the ball, most teams, I think, this year are going to look at that Bucks front with Vita Vea and Shaq Barrett, the two really fast linebackers, Devin White, Levante David, all that they have up there and say, we don't want to run against these guys. Plus, we're going up against the Bucks offense that is probably going to score a lot of points. Do the Rams stay within their game plan? They want to run. Daryl Henderson's been running the ball well. They're, they're blocking it up up front. I mean, it's, a, it's always been a pretty efficient running game. How much are they sticking with that game plan, sticking with that balance, and or how much are, is this one of those games where they put a little bit more on Stafford and just try to attack a little bit more? Yeah, and they're an offense that likes to run the ball. Like, they don't want to give up on that. It's one of the things that this system is built off. So they don't have as easy a task to do what the Cowboys did, which is to just say, we are not running the ball anywhere near those guys up front. It's going to be Dak's show. We'll trust him to spread the ball to where it needs to go. It's all going to be through the pass game. I don't know that the Rams are particularly well-suited to do that. And actually when teams have been able to crank down on that run game in the past this rams offense hasn't gone as well and that's been one of the criticisms leveled at sean McVay is that he doesn't have that kind of adjustment yet where it's not good enough when teams are able to do that so i think that's an interesting part of this the rams through two weeks are the sixth most run heavy offense in the nfl obviously that's partly because they've been winning games so they're able to run late in the, in the game but that's going to be a factor like this is going to be a difficult defense to run the ball against maybe it's easier because they're running more wide zone stuff than trying to run up the gut that Dallas would have been doing but that's definitely like a a big factor in this yeah so strategically and tactically I think that's going to be something to watch how do the Rams attack this Bucks defense where teams have had success is with patience the underneath passing game for the Cowboys and the Falcons was pretty efficient against this Bucks D they like to play softer zones and there are there are holes there um, it's a pressure game for Devin White, another guy. You know, I was I was just re-watching a lot of his negative plays and a lot of the Falcons' comeback the other day is Devin White getting blocked at the second level and being out of position in the pass game. He's a hyped-up linebacker who makes a lot of flash plays, but he's a guy that – those are the types of players who have targets on their back when McVay's out there, right? When those when the, when the Rams and the, the Shanahan's and the McVay's are out there calling plays, those linebackers have targets on their back. So Levante David, Devin White, going to be pretty key for this Bucks defense and making sure that they're in position and not exploited. The other side of the ball is really fascinating to me, though. The Bucks offense, with or without Antonio Brown, let's say they're without him. You still have Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. You'll see more snaps from a Scotty Miller, you know, as, the, as a deep threat. Uh, you have Tyler Johnson there. You got Gronk, Cameron Brayton, and OJ Howard. Like, all these guys are still out there. Uh, but the Rams defense, with Aaron Donald up front, with Jalen Ramsey once again playing in and around the line of scrimmage. They play. They're playing mostly zone. He's playing in the slot for the most part, and playing that late career Woodson role. But he's got one of the best run defense grades so far. One of the best coverage grades. 
really using Ramsey in a unique way. I, I don't know how that fits in, though, with such a receiver-driven offense that the Bucks have. Do you need to move Ramsey around and see Mike Evans and Chris Godwin a little bit more? Well, are we going to see that thing we were looking for in 2017? Is this Ramsey versus Gronk, finally? That too, right? I mean, if he's on the interior, I, I just don't know – is this the best way to deploy Jalen Ramsey against the Bucs? It doesn't, you're not going to play matchup football. They don't play man coverage. It's not what they're going to do. But with Darius Williams and uh, David Long on the outside, right, those guys feel like mismatches for Mike Evans. And Mike Evans and Ramsey last year had a pretty good battle in this game uh, when they played. And that's the other piece of this. The Rams' defense last year gave the Bucs problems. They gave everybody problems. Something's got to give. Rams' defense that doesn't give up big plays, Bucks' offense that's, that's built on it. One of the most um, one of the most exciting players for me to watch this year is Gronk. Like I've, I've made this point before, Gronk is only six months older than Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey's the best tight end in the NFL, an All Pro, looks like a superstar, still in the middle of his prime. And I've kind of been using that to say, you know, maybe Travis Kelsey is actually closer to the end than people think he is, and at some point that's going to disappear. The idea that he's able to win constantly and destroy people and left right and center and all this kind of thing but what if it actually means that Gronk's got a lot more left in the tank and if you re sort of reverse what we've got is a 2018 season where he was like banged up battered the Patriots offense was already beginning their collapse um because of the end of that that whole secret that whole cycle a 2019 season where he was off retired partying doing whatever Gronk was doing that year and then last year where like he's coming back from a year not doing anything right not even and Gronk was one of those guys where it's not like Gronk was staying in football shape for that year you know he wasn't like waiting for the call he was off doing whatever I'm not saying he got out of shape but he wasn't in tight end football shape he won a WWE championship yes but he like lost a lot of he was weight in wrestling shape of course yes exactly very pro, different type pro of shape. wrestling shape right lost a lot of weight like you know was was not focusing on hey if somebody calls me tomorrow I'm ready to step in and go so I think it makes some sense that 2020, it was good, but it wasn't vintage Gronk. You know, there was an adjustment period back. The dude now has six touchdowns in his last three games. Um, Including the Super Bowl. Yes. Yeah. A 90-grade overall this season. I mean, what if Gronk is actually back to being Gronk, and you're going to get a whole season of the best tight end in the NFL again? The truth is, I mean, it's what – Brady's our highest-graded quarterback right now by a pretty good distance so far through two games, but it's what makes the Bucks so difficult. Again, if, if Antonio Brown is out there, I mean, who do you cover? How do you cover these guys? And in, in a zone-heavy scheme with the Rams, they have to get pressure, and then it's about Brady just deciphering their coverages, and then, you know, Gronk, to your point, he's just been the guy who's been open, you know, these first couple weeks. But it is different than last year where it felt like he could only run fast two or three times per game. He's just He's got his speed back. He's got his football legs under him. So cover Gronk, cover Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, even, again, Scotty Miller, who's just you know 4-2, get behind the defense type of guy. Bucks are really tough to defend. Um, yeah. But the Rams are the best in the league at discouraging the downfield stuff that the Bruce Arians offense loves. So from Brady's perspective, how did, he's got to play within that system without forcing it down the field, take the underneath stuff. And this could be one of those games like the Bucks' weakness is thrown to their backs, you know, receiving backs. And those guys generally get targeted a little bit more against the Rams. So Ronald Jones, Leonard Fournette, they got to, you know, catch the ball and turn it up field. Or maybe it's a Gio uh, Bernard game because he's the best receiver out of that group. So that fascinating chess match here. It'll be interesting to see if they do actually do that to say this is a game where Gio Bernard needs to be like the number one back because we can't actually trust Fournette and Ronald Jones to reliably catch the ball and not fumble it away once they do. Yeah. Because those guys, I mean, Fournette dating back to high school, to college, to the, the combine, that guy fights the catching the ball more than most running backs I've ever seen ever. Yeah. Like it just looks difficult for him. And he catches a lot of them, but – they're like half of them are double caught. It's just, it's awkward. He sort of costs himself yards by fighting the football into his grasp before he can take off. Jones just doesn't catch half of them. Um, whereas you've got a guy like Gio Bernard who, you know, is not a great running back, but he's a good pass catcher. Right. So if you're facing a game like this, this would be a James White game if you were the Patriots. And obviously they have been perfectly happy to cycle through a whole committee of a backfield and just lean on whichever guy makes sense for that game. Tampa Bay hasn't yet shown any inclination to do that is that somewhere that Brady can actually have an influence and say hey you know if I'm going to be checking down to this guy 20 times today make, maybe make it it's better. not a Lenny game but the here's the tricky part right 
the Rams, they play two high safeties a lot and they rotate them and they do all this stuff, right? They invite you to run the football. The Bucs have been really good. We, we were critical of the Bucs play calling last year and Byron Leftwich and how much it was, you know, run, run, pass, and first down runs. They have been running a ton of play action. So that's either Leftwich adjusting or Brady, you know, having more influence. This might be a game where they are more inclined to run the ball as well or inf influenced yeah. to run the ball. So that matchup up front with the Rams, of course, trying to block Aaron Donald if you're the Bucs. Aaron Donald probably has to have a big game here if they're going to slow down the box, get into the backfield. I like the comment you made to me last week when they zoomed in on it. Byron Leftwich, you know, coaching up Tom Brady in the sideline, and you asked, what can Byron Leftwich possibly be, you know, teaching Tom Brady on the <laughs> sideline of an NFL football game? I mean, obviously you have to have a back and forth, and the play caller is going to see some stuff that you're not going to see. You know, it's just funny because it's like this intense yeah. discussion, you know, two guys who played against each other a couple times, you know, 15 years ago, <laughs> and Brady's still going. Um, but the Bucks, I think, are they're doing they're making better decisions offensively this year. Plus, Brady's throwing the ball well. Plus, the receivers are really good. But if there's a if there's a defense equipped to slow them down, it's the Rams. So this is one of the matchups of the year as far as sides of the ball. Uh, spreads one and a half here. Where are you leaning? Uh, I will go Tampa Bay to win. One and a half. So the Rams are one and a half point dogs. Right. Uh, yeah, Tampa Bay to win and to cover. If I have to pick, I think I'll take Tampa Bay. I'm not surprised, obviously. It's a, it's a close matchup. I'm not surprised if the Rams win this. Um, they, the Rams beat them last year on Monday Night Football and gave the Bucs a lot of trouble, uh, the Bucs offense a lot of trouble. Jared Goff actually balled out in that game, too. People forget Jared Goff balls out every now and People again. People forget. People forget that. As it happens, uh, PFF Greenline, which is the – betting tool on the website that leverages all of PFF's data to tell you where the value is uh, against Vegas and the point spread and all those kinds of things. Green Line likes the Bucks. All right. There we go. I so. didn't know that before I said the Bucks, but now I do. I'm, I'm going with Green Line, as now you I do, should. I'm happier. <laughs>